what's going on everybody Kenny Dubs here with a, another Mega Man X dive drift overview video today we're going to be talking about Roll EXE as she releases alongside the hub style Mega Man EXE on the most recent banner in X dive so let's get into it all right so here we're taking a look at Roll EXE and unfortunately Roll EXE does not actually have a voice we haven't had a game where Roll was voiced unlike the other characters like Proto Man as an example Proto Man EXE actually had voice acting from the Mega Man Battle 5 Double Team DS. So I don't know if they're gonna plan to add voice acting for Roll at some point, like they did with base or some other characters. Yeah, as of right now, I don't think they will. But in the case, let's take a look at Roll's acting skills. So first off, we have the Roll Whip. And this attack deals about 159% attack damage to all targets within range and automatically accurate heart flash recover HP to your attack. If you played battle before, this should look very familiar. This is the attack that Roll uses when she is summoned via her battle chip. Let's take a look at the modifier chip here. First, the wave recovery boost enhance the recovery by 25%, which isn't bad. So then it goes up to about 31% or so for the HP recovery. Or 31% of your attack, rather, I guess I should say. Then we power increase, increases damage by 5%. It's okay. For PvE content, you're probably gonna be using recovery boost. And finally, we have Showtime. We're not taking damage while using the skill. Unfortunately, I wish that was baked into the skill, and then this could be maybe true Showtime, so that you take no, you will not suffer any satisfaction while using the skill. So then you pop this on and you have true Showtime. But not much you can say about that. Next up, we have Roll Arrow. Roll Arrow actually does the same amount of attack damage as her previous skill for Roll Whip. So 159% attack damage to the target and cause defocus attacks have a 56, roughly 56% chance to miss the target. And that's actually pretty good. It gives Roll in, in PvP, it gives Roll, you know, a little bit more, like it's like, kind of like fake, fake bulk to her as the attacks might miss. It's pretty interesting. I do like Roll, I do like this skill. The modified tip first away penetration enhancement next now penetrate one extra target the damage becomes 25 percent after penetration not gonna use this in pvp maybe in pve you might want to use this but in for pve i think this is a little bit better energy convergence when it hits a uh, roller can apply its effect to all targets in range okay no i lied i thought this expanded the range of of rolls d of of just like the you know the the radius of it right not the not just the the defocus uh this is okay and use for pve uh pvp you might want this if you if you're not like fully maxed out but i think what you're gonna actually want to use is hp recovery when hitting a target recover hp equals uh, roughly 16 percent of your attack i think that's what you're going to be use when you're using in pve and pvp to be honest maybe for pve you can make um an argument for this but i think this will be better overall and you'll see a little bit later with our passives uh, i think this is better not only do you get healing with it which is great but roll is pretty tanky so her healing with her is pretty good. First up, for her passive skills, we have continuous damage resistance, 40% chance to come immune to the effects of continuous damage, same types of effects can be stacked. This basically doesn't exist. It's not gonna be useful all that often. Um, I'm not sure why they didn't give us something a bit more beneficial with this, because they did the same thing in the Proto Man EXE. But I mean, it's there, it might help in PVE a little bit, but more often than not, you're not gonna really care about this. We have Purify. When you use a character skill, you only move one debuff. I like this. This is pretty solid. Uh, this kind of helps out roll as in when she uses a skill, you will be able to assume yourself outside of the effects that say they cannot be removed. So obviously that's going to depend on a variety of things depending on you know the character, if they have their DNA or, or what, the, what the skill is, what have you, if they're more recent character. But for the most part, you just remove, say, chilled effect or dot damage, which... I don't know. I, this just makes it so that you resist dot damage. You can remove it with this. So I like. I'm really not sure why this is here, but whatever. Anyway, uh, just a nice Asuna there. Now this one, our next one. Heart Arrow is really really nice, and I like this one a lot. When above 75% HP, gain Heart Arrow status that cannot be removed. Rolls arrows defocus cannot be removed, and it ignores running of shield. And defocus targets have a 100% chance to miss their targets. Movement speed is also increased by 30% when in Heart Arrow state. So I really, really like this, this passive right here. As long as you're above 75% HP, you get a movement buff. Your defocus is now 100%, so they're guaranteed to miss their attacks. It cannot be removed, uh, and it ignores Burner of Shield. So that's that's actually a very, very good passive for roll. Right there, and yeah, it's just real good. 
and all you gotta do is be below 75 percent hp which your skills you do have access to healing with them and this one is very important uh, you don't have to connect to a target with just the heal you just use it and you will heal because of the heart flash at the end so you don't even have to hit anything you'll just get the heal anyway then next with hp absorb upon hitting a defocus target Restore HP equal to 20% of your attack. This one can only be triggered one time every three seconds. And when your HP is above 75%, reduce damage take by 25%. So not only do we have access to Heart Arrow when you're above 75% HP, we also have just inherent damage mitigation above 20 above 75% HP. On top of that, you have a lot of healing in Rolls Kit because now with this passive, when you hit a defocus target, you just restore 20% of your HP. So now you have even more healing after you hit you hit your roll arrow and this one isn't even limited to your character skills it's just when you hit a defocus target so you can use your weapons and trigger this and then you know get your your roll flash here get some healing off that and then maybe and then get more healing off of this as well and finally we have defensive shift when hit can enhance defense status to reduce damage taken by 80 percent already starting off strong this effect can only be triggered once more after a 6 second cooldown. When HP is below 50%, gain heart arrow status cannot be removed. This effect can only be triggered again after a 12 second cooldown. I like this passive a lot. The only real downside with this passive is the fact that the enhanced defense status, but that's just simply because, at least in the global version, the, the Grudge Axe is a very, very common weapon. There's also things, you know, like undo advantage, scourge, things like that, that can just remove the defensive shift. However, I do think it's still very, very good, just because you will get hit, the damage will be reduced, and then they take your buff away. So it still has some value in it. I just don't want it to be taken, uh, removed, or taken away from me. But the fact that this gives you access to Heart Arrow when you're below 50% HP is insane as well. So now you have access to Heart Arrow as long as you're above 75%. And if you're below 50%. So now the only time you don't have heart arrow is in between 50% and 75% HP. But with roll, that should be pretty easy to somewhat maintain. Because you have your HP absorb, reducing damage to taken by 25% when you're above 75% HP. You have your you have the defense on your defense chip. And then you have the healing on your skills as well. So that's it for rolls passive. Let's take a quick look at her DNA. Her DNA will not be released with her when she drops in the global version but again as per usual i'm just going over it to show you what you have to what you have in store for a roll first up dynamic destruction when roll whip hits a target and that will slow the target's movement speed by 43 percent this is actually quite nice something i didn't mention about roll whip is that it, it ignores terrain so you can kind of attack through terrain it does have a short range so they still have to be within range it's not like something like cannon god but it does go through terrain, which is something to note. So again, using going like the cyberspace example I've, I've used uh, pretty frequently, just because I believe that's the map currently in PvP and global. If they're, if they're on one side of a pillar and on the other side, you can roll whip through the pillar and hit them with it. So that's something you can do to hit them with the, the dynamic destruction and just rolls in general. Maybe not dynamic destruction because as of right now, or she won't have her DNA when she drops, but you know, for future reference. And I'm just using that as an example anyway. Then this one, complete penetration. Roll arrow can now go through terrain and barriers. The prep time for roll arrow is used by 20%, which is very, very nice because roll arrow, uh, the the prep time for it, I think it's like five seconds. So it'll go down to uh, four and change, I think 4.2, something like that. That's very nice. But being able to go through terrain is just fantastic, right? You, you really want to be able to penetrate terrain so that you can poke from further away. So that's just great to have as well. Although I do wish this was kind of caked into something else. Maybe like if this was caked into her heart arrow status, I think that would be fantastic. But having it this way isn't bad either. The, again, the only downside is that she won't have her DNA when she drops in global. But if she had it caked into her heart arrow status, that would also mean that we can have a better DNA here. So, and I think this is good. I just kind of, would have preferred if this was just built into her kit inherently. And then this one we have here is target lock. Locks onto a target that has been hit with roll arrow. When the target is hit again by roll arrow, it'll do an additional 60% damage, which is pretty good, to be honest. Uh, roll isn't really there for her damage. She's more kind of like the tank and sustain damage uh, kind of deal. So uh, giving her even more damage to deal when hitting a 
a target that's been with her roll arrow is pretty good. She also has two charges of roll arrow, so that's something to keep in mind as well. I think it's okay. I would I would like this to also add another charge of roll arrow potentially, but I mean that's just that's just me being being wishful with our DNA. And let's take a look at our, our unique DNA, which is actually pretty bad. If you remember from the the preview I did, reduce defense stimulant when you are in reduced defense status, increase damage deal by four percent. Reason why this is bad is because you yourself have to be in defense reduction status or defense crush, which means roll roll has to be debuffed in order for this to work, which is pretty like why? Like I don't understand why they give these to some units. Now, there are times when obviously yes, they, they will be this will have applications, but more often than not, you probably won't be worrying about that. So uh, that's the thing. Also, I would I would like it more if it just if it just neutered the, the defense crush status as opposed to amping the damage is ideal while I'm in defense crush status, personally. Aside from that, Roll has thorough preparation at the ability, she has machine gun at the ability, which is interesting because machine guns are the only weapons that she has affinity for, but that's even through her DNA, so it's not even that great. Um, oh, she doesn't have player something over here like I thought she did. Oh, that's, that's unfortunate. Hmm. Yeah, let's check over here. Interference resistance status. Interference resistance isn't actually bad on Roll, I don't think. Just because of characters like... Uh, oh, God, what's the name? Prince of Valshark, zero. Zero nightmare right now. But again, she won't have access to this at her release. At least as far as I'm aware, she won't have access to her DNA. So this, by the time she gets to DNA, this might not even matter anymore. But because they need to in in inflict interference status in order to remove her buffs, this does help you a little bit in keeping your enhanced defense from her fifth passive. Outside of that, can you use damage special attack, slow attack, that only matters with when she gets to DNA. Defocus special attack, okay, that's really good. Mm, yeah, but she doesn't have fire or something like I thought she would. Okay. Uh, boss Sentinel isn't bad. Boss and Spotter Sentinels aren't too bad if you're using her in PvE, but I would not recommend getting these unless you're particularly maybe struggling with something. Well, if you're going to use her in Boss Rush, I guess, but if you're using her in Boss Rush, you just use a stronger character, to be honest, so that you don't have to worry about dying. You don't have to worry about taking as, as much damage in needing Boss Sentinel. But. That's going to be for Roll's passive, so now let's take a look at some weapons that they will carry well with Roll EXE. Okay, so unfortunately Roll EXE doesn't have any inherent affinities with weapons, and like a lot of other characters, it's kind of open-ended what you, what you can use with her. So, starting off here, uh, I'm just going to suggest Cannon God. Cannon God is a very, very good weapon. You don't have to have line of sight of the enemy. You can just kind of fire, and because of the range of Cannon God and the terrain, that will be really good with her. And since we're on launchers, the Turbo Cannon will be okay. Turbo Cannon, as per usual, it has access to iframes, which Roll doesn't inherently have on her own with overheat protection. Because any character iframe is really good. Though, as per, again, as per usual, I'm going to make sure that people are aware you might not want to unlock a fresh energy tank because this gives you 10% more energy, which sounds good in practice. But when actually using Turbo Cannon to get the iframes, that means you have to fire more shots to get to the, you know, the empty clip to activate your iframes. An interesting option, which is something you can use, I wouldn't fully recommend this, is the Bubble Bomber. Just because the Bubble Bomber does allow you to get some healing, you get regeneration when the energy in this is exhausted. Uh, you get the Oracle of Life as well when you're hit, you restore HP. And then the Water Fleas actually can pierce terrain uh, alongside the regular shots. So those are pretty nice. Uh, this actually might be an interesting tech with Roll, just because she wants to be, you know, at her threshold, either above 75% or or 50%. Um, but, yeah, I think this is an okay thing you can use with her. Again, I wouldn't, like, fully recommend this as, like, your main go-to option, though. I recommend Nightmare, uh, just for the utility that Nightmare can provide with this uh, enhanced attack bonuses. If you want to go something awkward, like... Nightmare Cannon God. I don't think there's really any chips or any combinations of cards that help with launch or melee. Uh, no, there are actually. I just, I just think they're not in global yet. But uh, you can stack up your attack buffs with Nightmare and then swap over Cannon God. You know, hit with that. Or maybe you're on the other side of a wall and you can hit with Roll Flash just to deal a little bit more damage with it that way. That is something that you, that you can do. 
freaking explosive bolt as well just because of how 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 easy it is to make use of melee plus buster setups with characters so you can go explosive bolt and nightmare maybe or grudge axe if you really want to um just so that you can steal buffs or even just attempt, you know maintain your own attack buffs and again melee plus buster means that you can have some inherent mitigation and damage amplification with your cards pretty easily as well okay so I'm not sure if this has a hidden to on global yet because I don't own the weapon on my global account, so I legitimately cannot check. But the Neon Laser could be an interesting choice of weapon as well, as the Neon Laser has a hidden skill that will inflict defocus on the opposition. The Neon Laser also isn't necessarily a bad weapon either. I don't think it's all that great. But on someone like Roll EXE, who wants the target to be defocused and you know specializes in hitting defocuses i think it'd be pretty good on her because you know the extra chance for defocusing will be great to have and that means more healing on her as well that's a pretty decent rate of fire and the only problem only real downside is that it is a machine gun all right so i think glittering spark could be an interesting choice on roll as well uh it is a sprayer and it has access to an inherent attack down which will obviously help roll's longevity but you can also equip the Mad Nautilus ship as well to further obliterate the opposition, quick attack down on them, and then that combined with Roll's healing and you know her her defense buff. Even without the defense buff, because of the 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 obliteration you're putting onto your opposition, I think it could help out Roll in in some matchups and be a bit tankier, so to speak, just because you're putting defense crush on the opposition. And then potentially the electric current spray gun as well just because electric current spray gun can inflict defense down but the electric current spray gun is also a sprayer so what you can do alongside that is put on the mad nautilus ship which will again much like i mentioned with the other spray it will help roll be a bit tankier and you can also inflict the uh what is it here immobilize with this as well if you would like this also this pierces terrain so this will be pretty a pretty decent choice i think on roll the downside is defense crush and that's not really a downside increase of damage by 34 percent which is a big amount but uh, this doesn't actually make her tankier right so there is that you might have to play a little bit more passively than or rather a little bit more carefully than you would if you had used the glittering spark or you maybe just go double sprayer that's something you can do and then finally i think i want to talk about the the star destroyer or i'm sorry the guided laser this weapon is not available in global just yet it should be coming out pretty soon but the reason i want to talk about this weapon is because it is a sprayer so again you can inflict you could use the magnolia ship alongside that however you might have seen it already star destroyer can inflict defocus and roll is unit that wants to have defocus utilized on her so i wanted to include this weapon on that also has defense increase as well which is pretty nice and then the final discharge was that energy this shoots out a shot that ignores the rain that deals about 191 percent attack damage it's slow firing but i think it's something that could be useful on roll and for the hidden skill i actually don't know what this has uh, oh right yeah this also has overheat protection as a hidden skill so then it's a sprayer that's to overheat protection as well you also use defocus special attack if you really want uh, range increase I, I think is pretty good as well but the overheat protection could be something uh, else if you want to use a sprayer with roll especially one that has defocus so i wanted to include this just because of that like i said i think global should be getting this pretty soon at least, at least looking at the the weapons that global has gotten so far this should be up next on the list of weapons that we released all right, so now I'm over here looking at some cards. My pair will roll. And kind of, again, as per usual, depending on what you cover with your D, well, roll won't have anything in her DNA to really help. So uh, I guess with roll, maybe rather than going the standard center player killer things, which you can still do, you can still definitely do the, you know, the center player killer things. I think you might want to just focus on player sentinel instead of player killer because roll is a more defensive unit. But in case you want to go the player killer route, let's go ahead and show our, our usuals, the M Bison, the Akuma, not player killer, Master of the Fist, but it stacks with player killer and works in it very similarly. The Life Aura card from Vase, which you can get in the Arena Token Shop. 
Sigma X4. Card, which again, you can get the Enrique token shop. It also has Player Killer. The Mac card and the Violin cards as well, which you, you can get Violin from Assorted Packs in the game. And Mac, you can get from Packs alongside of, but Mac is an A rank card, so it should be much easier to get Mac. As for cards with Player Sentinel, the first one that jumps to mind is the Spy Devil card. It, it has Player Sentinel 2 inherently. This is fully built up, so it's Player Sentinel 3. But Player Sentinel 2 on it, and they stack with itself, so you can you can just have two of these, one that less than 5 star and one that 5 star, and a 14% reduction damage just for existing in PvP. The Heat Gut style actually is an interesting choice as well, as that the focus special attack if you want to amp your damage with something like this. And it triggers off with three reds, so you can stack at least two of them together. I'm not entirely sure how much I would like this though, just because you need you need three reds. So you can you can stack two of these for sure. But I think you'd want to go with a more defensive route with roll personally. So um, you know, stacking player sentinel I think is it would be better. Although if you have to go the Buster Melee route, you can always use your double Elite Hunter cards as those are those will always be a good combination for Buster Melee. And because it triggers off of blue red, um, again you stack two of these and then you can stack something else of your choosing. Because these will both be blue, and then you'll have you know 18% mitigation for just existing and 18% damage amplification for existing in PvP. And PvE as well, actually, if you're using it there. The ISOC card, card as well has Player Sentinel if you want to invest into this. Also comes with the mobilized resistance, so you'll be you'll have a bit of resistance there for that as well. You could also make use of the homeopathy death abilities when you shoot 50% or higher, reduce damage taken. Uh, these might be okay if you can't put in player, player sentinel or you can put this on top of player sentinel, just because when your HP 50% or higher, you will also probably have access to your your heart arrow status again assuming that you're above the 75 percent threshold which should be pretty easy with roll just because again you don't have to necessarily hit anything with her with a roll whip attack you can just use that to heal yourself the rainbow mika card actually has player central and through hoveration adaptability so when you have your your heart arrow status live uh, you also have this live as well and it has player central which is very very good all right i think that will wrap up roll like i said i do really like using roll exe i think she's a fun character especially because you don't really get to interact with her much in the battle network series in terms of like fighting her or controlling her i think you you get to fight her once in battle network 4 and then you get to play as her i believe in 4.5 and battle chip challenge i think that's the only only games where you can really interact with roll all that much but Yep, that's it for her. Hopefully this got your, your brain juices flowing on maybe some interesting build with roll because I would definitely like to see some of those happening in global, to be quite honest. Before we end off the video, I just want to give a quick shout out to my YouTube channel members and my patrons for supporting me and allowing me to continue doing what I do. It's been a support me as a YouTube channel member or a Patreon. You can find out how to do the information down below the video and I will catch you guys next time. Later. Thank you.